Well, it's Speedway now, and the series of eliminators that culminate in the World Individual Championship reached one of its moments of decision at Coventry on Wednesday night. The event, of course, the British final, with the top 16 British qualifiers racing for the eight places available to them in the overseas final. Absent was Michael Lee. He'd had his five-year ban reduced to one year that very afternoon, but he was still out, his place being taken by Gordon Kennett. Very much in contention, however, were Bellevue's Peter Collins and Chris Morton with the World Pairs title under their belts, an event sadly not covered by Italian television. But undoubtedly the hero of the night, the injured Kenny Carter. He qualified for this British final, riding with a leg fractured in four places and having to be lifted on and off his bike like a medieval knight. Just before the racing began, Gary Newborn asked him what problems he had racing with that broken leg. Well, if you look at the boots, you know, you can see the difference in size. Uh, and I've got to have a special cast on, so I have no movement on my right leg. So it's hard work when you're riding because you can't manoeuvre the bike the same, so it's difficult. Well, after a hot, clear day, the weather suddenly turned. There were torrential showers, and for a while it looked as if the whole meeting might have to be cancelled. It started in appalling conditions, which didn't stop Kenny Carter winning his first heat. But after a 40-minute stoppage, this is what happened to John Louis in heat four. Everett's in with perhaps the three most experienced riders in the field. Dave Jessup on the inside. He'll be in red, of course, a former British champion, David, back in 1980. He's been in the frame, what, uh, three times. Next to him in blue, we have Peter Collins. He was unhappy about track conditions. Grid three has Neil Everts on the outside. John Louis, Tiger Louis in yellow and black, who uh, really was outspoken in his opposition. So what will happen here in heat four as the 1984 British final gets back underway. And it is Everts who gets away. Everts is in the lead. Louis is second. Jessup moving through into second place. Louis has gone down, sliding into the fence. The race continues, and the red light is on. It has to be stopped because Man and Machine are still in a dangerous position. John Louis, was that fall, in your opinion, to do with the track? Of course, 100% to do with the track. I tried to race Neil round the outside, and there's no bloody... That's just like a... That's so slippery, you can see for yourself in a moment. I start to get a good run down into the corner. You can see coming around the corner OK. I'm, all the others are just on the inside. On the one line that's possibly OK, I'm getting a little bit of a run on Neil, and I've lost it. That's it. The track is just absolutely straightened up to try and get some more grip. Nothing there at all. Like, you move out on that slimy, and you might as well... You're for dead. You're finished. When you go abroad in long track meetings, are you some, some of the boys ride in worse conditions than this? Well, the, the problem is, if this meeting would have been nowhere else in England, everybody would have rode, they would have had to ride. I think they will, they will ride today. But if you look on the inside where people's rode, it's dry. I mean, you can see the track over there. There's no problem. It's on the outside where it's wet, but nobody rides there. And I think the problem is, because it's raining, a few riders have scored no points or one point, and they don't want to carry on. I've won one race. I might come last in my next race, but, and I've got a broken leg. You know, I've got a broken leg, and I'd like to ride. And if it was that bad, I wouldn't want to ride. But, Referee's just announced we're carrying on. But if, if, if you look at the track at Oxford, I've got a video of that meeting, and the track was worse than this, and it was pissing down. It was raining? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd just like to say, uh, I'm not very happy. I was in the changing room, 16 riders and myself, and five or six of the riders uh, sort of ganged up on me because I wanted to ride and started swearing and things at me. And that's from the England teammates, so I don't think very much of them either. So the riders, is, the temper's getting so afraid of the decision well, to carry on you know, that they turned on you? They're starting turning on me because I want to ride. You know, I voice my opinion and say I want to ride. They voice their opinion and say they don't want to ride. And so there's no need to get nasty, but they seem to get a little bit nasty. So the riders on maximum points, Kenny Carter, Alan and Andy Graham and Neil Everts, all wanting to continue, but the others, including Les Collins, Mark Courtney, Gordon Kennett and Dave Jessup, who were one point behind, saying that the track was too dangerous. Dave Lanning picks up the story. Kenny Carter coming into heat number five, and this one really should have an interesting prospect because we have two of the riders who have been in the camp who wish to continue to race that's carter and alan graham and two of the riders who really have been opponents of that decision that's john louis who has been uh, really outspoken in his opposition and chris morton he'll be in yellow and black there is carter and it is really staggering to hear him say that his england teammates 
have been slagging him off in the dressing room for his desire to race. It's hard to imagine. There's Carter, the number one. He has never been universally popular. He says what he thinks and leads with his chin, but it certainly isn't a glass chin. But that's amazing that a lad with a broken leg can get some abuse just because he wants to ride and uh, do his duty to the public. Really quite amazing. Here's John Louis. Well, we've heard what he thinks of conditions. He says it's absolutely diabolical and should be called off. And uh, how is it going to affect his racing frame of mind? Will they be hunting for Carter? Or will the will and more positive appetite to race of Carter and Graham take its toll here in heat five? Looking across the lineup on the inside, Louis, no score excluded with a fall in his first ride. Grid two has Alan Graham with a win. He is in blue. Carter is in white in grid three with a win. And Chris Morton, who had no score in his first ride, is on the outside. From a statistical point of view, in the first four races, the winner has come from the inside, grid in red. And away they go again and up to the first corner. It is Carter away bravely. Carter leads at second place is Louis. Third is Graham. And Carter is riding a brave, brave race. Morton's crept up into third place. So it's Carter in front, second place Louis, third place is Morton, and Alan Graham is at the back. And Carter is absolutely tearing them apart. And it really does take a special brand of courage to turn on a performance like this. Still Carter in front, John Murray picking up two points here, retrieving his own personal situation in third place, it's Morton. Into the last lap, still Carter, now uh, all, oh, what, 50 lengths in front, getting a bit tight at the minor placings with Morton now pressing on the back of John Louis. No way through there. A win for Carter. Second place, Louis. Third place was Chris Morton. And Carter acknowledging the crowd. And the crowd, in turn, acknowledging a real little hero. In this controversial British final, all the field of 16 have now completed their first two rides. And here is the leaderboard. In the lead, one point clear of the field, the brave Kenny Carter unbeaten on six points. Then we have four riders on five points. Dave Jessup, Andy Graham, Neil Evitz and Les Collins. Martin Yates, the sole National League representative, he's on four points. Gordon Kennett has three and Alan Graham has three. And at the moment, those would be the eight to go forward. Heat 10 brings back into the picture the rider who really has captured the imagination and the hearts of this crowd here at Coventry. Kenny Carter unbeaten, he'll be in grid two in the blue helmet color. As the racing has improved, track conditions drying up slightly, it has been shown it's possible to come from the back. Carter has made two impeccable starts and has not looked in danger really. But he's got some tough opposition here. John Davis on the inside, a fast starter in red. Then Carter in grid two. Grid three has Dave Jessup, who has conquered conditions, has five points. And on the outside, Martin Yates, who too can hop out of the traps. He has four points. Here we go, heat ten. And again, it is Carter and uh, rather Jessup who shows. Jessup and Yates coming around the outside. And Carter lost almost control going up to the first corner. It's Martin Yates and Jessup together as they hit the bottom turn. And it is Martin Yates in front. And the young man from Wiltshire really is showing the way. Here's Carter coming into the picture. And the boy really has got some courage. You've got to take a hat off to him. He's having a go from the back. Remember, he's riding with a broken leg, and I think he's got round Dave Jessup. Carter has gone into second place and chasing hard after Martin Yates. Yates in front, tremendous speedway here in heat 10. Carter wants to be with his champion. He's almost overcooked the bottom corner and Jessup has come back inside him into the last lap. And it is now Jessup moving up into second place and Carter's back in third place, but he's not finished. Yates in front, Jessup is second. Kenny Carter, who really is putting his neck on the line here. A win for Yates. Second place is Jessup. Third is Carter. And he really put 101% into that one. Oh. 
They've all had three races, and it's now Andy Graham, British champion two years ago, and a controversial exclusion victim last year. He has now hit the front with eight points. In joint second place, Martin Yates, a surprise packet. Kenny Carter, the brave one. Neil Evitz, another surprise packet, and Dave Jessup on seven apiece. Alan Graham and Les Collins on six points. And then we have two riders on four points, Gordon Kennett and Jeremy Doncaster. And that is the cut point with eight to qualify. On the inside, Evitz, seven points. Next to him, Wig, needing points on three. Grid three in white, Andy Graham, the leader at this stage on eight points. On the outside, Kid Courageous, Kenny Carter, seven points, two race wins and a third. And this is heat 15 and is the eventual British champion going to emerge from the charge up to the first corner here in heat 15. A fantastic picture of Carter's concentration. And he is impatient. Settle back down, away they go this time. And it looks like, oh, they all bunch to the corner. And it's Carter in front in second place, it's Wig. And it really is tight as Wig and Carter. Wig is mono-wheeling as Carter goes clear. And once again, he showed an awful lot of bottle there. Carter in front, second place, Wig. Third place is Andy Graham and Evitz has been tailed off. Carter, well, most sportsmen with a broken leg would have been content just to come and qualify. Carter has come to win, and he really is stretching this heat 15 where he has two of his main rivals. Into the last lap of heat 15, and it's still Carter. And he's getting a bit tight at the back for Simon Wick. Wig suddenly is aware of the danger. Gets the throttle turned on, but Carter is going to win heat 15. So impeccably. Wig is second, third place. It was Andy Graham. And it was a fair old jostle up to the first turn when Carter looked to be squeezed out, but still got the drop. And the crowd are rising to Kenny Carter, and that really is not surprising. Heat number 16 with, well... A lot of stories to tell, really. On the inside, Chris Morton, the reigning British champion, an unhappy night. He has picked up the situation. He started with an engine failure, has three points. So it's critical for him to score points here in this, his penultimate ride. Next to him, Mark Courtney in blue, Bellevue teammate. Started promisingly enough at the second place, but has run two lasts. And again, is beginning to chase rainbows. Les Collins in grid three has provided most of the excitement uh, at the rear of his races. He has a total of, what, six points, so still very much in line for the overseas final. And Dave Jessup, who could move up jointly onto the leaderboard in first place with Kenny Carter. If he wins, he has a total of seven points. Here we go for heat 16. And it looks like Jessup's got a flyer. Jessup is away in second place. It is Les Collins and coming hard. It was Courtney. But Morton in third place as they spread off around the bottom corner. And here comes Les Collins again. And Les Collins does love to get out where the drive is and keep a big handful of throttle. He's going to go around Dave Jessup and Les Jessup can get his wheels back in line. They're absolutely locked together as they hit the bottom corner. And who will it be to level out? It is Les Collins. Fine piece of overtaking. He needs it. Second place Jessup in third place. Morton still in there battling. And this is a real speedway race. Three England colleagues in line of B. This track has improved as the evening has worn on. It must be a vindication of referee Lou Strip for insisting the meeting continues because it hasn't slowed them down. Collins is way out where originally it was slimy and muddy. He wins. 8-16, second place. Jessup holding on. Morton goes across, really clenching his fist and pawing the air. I think he knows he's out of the World Championship, and that will be heartbreaking for the reigning title holder and England skipper. But that is Speedway Racing. Here is Les Collins, who once again produced his party piece from the outside to win heat number 16. Four rides completed, one to go. And the guy with the gammy leg, Kenny Carter, is back in front on 10 points. We have a cluster of riders in second place on nine points with Andy and Alan Graham, 
Dave Jessup and Les Collins all breathing down his necks. Martin Yates from Little National League. Weymouth is in there on eight points. We have Neil Evitz on seven and Gordon Kennett on six. Now, those are the top eight with one to go. When we look under the cut line, we've got Jeremy Doncaster, Peter Collins and Simon Wigg all on five and looking very much for an impressive and point-scoring last ride to improve their chances. One of the plus factors of these qualification meetings is that the battle for places goes right the way down the list and that pretty well every race right the way through has a meaning and indeed a target for a rider. And Heat 18 here is a perfect example because we have the two riders who have in fact been the unexpected successes, Martin Yates, he'll be in blue, and Neil Evitz in yellow and black on the outside. And both of those, there is Evitz, will be looking for points to consolidate and go through. They must score here, really, to be sure of going on to Bellevue and that overseas final. And they're in against Chris Morton, who has four points. He's on the inside, and he really must win this one. He knows that if he's to stand any chance of going through to the next train on his home track. And uh, Jeremy Doncaster is in exactly the similar position. He's in white. He has a total of five points. So everything to go for here in Heat 18. Morton, Yates, Doncaster, Evans, that's the way they line up. And not one of them can afford to miss out. And Yates has got a flyer. Yates has got a flyer moving hard on the inside. It's Doncaster. As they all level down the back straight, it is still Yates in front. Great corner in second place is Doncaster. In third place, it is Morton. We've had some surprises in Speedway over the years, and this must rate as one of the biggest. Martin Yates, you know what an accomplished performer he is at junior level, and he really is going quite beautifully here. And Doncaster under some pressure from Chris Morton and Neil Evans at the back, and this might be a disaster for the young Halifax star. Seven points might not get through the last lap and Doncaster and Morton are really twisting it all on to try and catch Yates and Doncaster will try and dive bomb and does so roaring through and can Morton go through the hole as well what a good piece of speedway Doncaster wins it second place it is Yates third place was Morton and that really was neck or nothing from Jeremy Doncaster oh. What a week for you, Chris Morton. World Pairs champion last Sunday, this time last year British champion, but completing this week, you go out of the World Championship this time. Yeah, it's uh, very disappointing under um, disgusting conditions, you know. I mean, the, the track now is probably raceable, but at the start, it should never have been started. So unfair, you know, to, to have to do it in these conditions. So there's Carter, he'll be on the inside, which... Um has been a very, very useful starting position, certainly early on when conditions were greasy. Not quite such an advantage now. Let's just spell out what it's all about here in the last race on the card anyway. Carter needs three points to take the title, so a win will put him clear for his first British Championship success. A second place will take him into a runoff with Andy Graham and with Les Collins, who's also in this race, providing Les wins it. He's on the outside in yellow and black. Now, Gordon Kennett, he is in grid three, must win to force a runoff for the eighth and final qualification place for Bellevue. The other rider in here, Peter Collins in blue, is out of it. The 1976 world champion and such a seasoned and indeed great ambassador for English Speedway is out, even if he wins. So Carter on the inside must win. Kennett must win. <laughs> Les Collins needs to win as well. Everything to go for here in Heat 20. And it is Peter Collins who gets away and who locks down on the line looking for Carter. And around the outside is Brother Les and of course the Collins boys are going to carve up Kenny Carter. Peter Collins in front, second place Les Collins can. Carter get through into second place, it looks like he's going to have a go. And has he got the drop on Les Collins? They're absolutely locked together down into the third corner. And Carter is going to go through shortly this time. Does so. He is through and he's battling with the Collins boys. And this is a fine piece of speedway again. Collins, Peter in front. Carter now challenging hard. 
got a lot of love lost between these two, and Kenny Carter is really riding the race of his life, and he's got the drop on Collins as they move into the last lap. And Carter in front, Peter Collins is second, Les Collins is third. The kid with the gammy leg has carved up the pieces, and this is a British Championship success, which should go into the record books. What a night for Kenny Carter. From the front, from the back, he has been incredible. You cannot question his courage, you cannot question his skill, you cannot question his right to be called the British Speedway Champion. He's had such bad luck when he's been 100% fit. What a way to win his first British Championship. And who, one must argue, is going to stop him in his quest for world honours? Yeah. Have a sweep first. Oh, Look at that, it's all gone, man. Uh, Ian's got it all. Kenny. Lick it off your jacket. Look at that. What? Kenny, are you sure you have broken your leg? <laughs> Kenny, are you sure you have got a broken leg the way you rode there? It yeah. was remarkable. I dare to twist the tapes again because I got warned once and uh, PC got a flyer, but I'm just happy that I won it. But uh, it looks as if the Collins brothers were going to carve you up there. You well, were in third they, both, place. they both went out, you know, to chop me up to help Peter and uh, they give me an hard time on the first two laps, but I came for them one, so that's what it's all about. It was a remarkable race, even in your career. Yeah, just over the moon. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, the show of great courage there by Kenny Carter, finishing the top qualifier and, of course, the British champion, the Ali qualifiers, Andy Graham. Dave Jessup, Martin Yates, Les Collins, Alan Graham, Jeremy Doncaster, and Simon Wing. Peter Collins, the former world champion, finished in joint ninth place, but he won the ride off, and so is named as the reserve. So those are the riders then who move on to the next qualifying round of the World Individual Championship, and we have the world final for you on Saturday, the 1st of September. <laughs>